Hey there, how's it going? Welcome to Loop Learning. This is the next video in the series. We are making inventory management system. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect SQL Server to Microsoft Access. So if you are interested, please do watch until the end. I'm sure you'll get some benefit. And if you are new to my channel or you're returning, uh, welcome or welcome back. And make sure that you hit subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notification whenever I upload a new video. Right. So let's get started with this video. As I mentioned, we are going to create a connection between SQL and Microsoft Access. But before I do that, a very, very important point I want to mention here. One of my very good viewers, and thank you very much if you're listening and watching, um, have pointed out something. I'll go to the design of the table. And you know, the, for the cost price and selling price, I used int, and that was wrong. And so the right, data type is numeric okay numeric 18 so numeric 18 18 is the maximum length of the digits that can be a price and the uh, comma and then the zero or one or two is a decimal okay so that's very very important because it it was if i kept it int then i could not use decimal points uh, either in the quantity or in the pricing. So thank you very much for pointing out and telling me, uh, let me make sure that, you know, it is corrected and let me ensure that I tell you also that, please make sure that you correct it, okay? So thanks again, and that's what I wanted to tell. All right, now coming back to the main topic. Now to connect SQL to Microsoft Access, couple of things you have to check but before you do that. Now some of you may have the older version of SQL, I would strongly suggest that you have the latest version. It is always good to have latest version of the application. And because this is free, so you can always update SQL Server to the latest version. Um, so you should have the latest version of SQL Server and you should know what bit it is. Is it 64-bit or 32-bit? Okay, most of the application right now, uh, nowadays I believe are coming as 64 bit. So you want to know what bit it is. So you go on the top and right click and click on properties. And you would know that, you know, you're using uh, 32 bit or 64 bit. Mine is 64 bit. Why I'm telling you that? Because there will be an issue if you have SQL Server 64 bit and access 32 bit. That is going to cause some problem, I believe so. Um, but uh, you can you can have you know 64 bit access and 64 bit SQL Server and that should not be a problem. Okay. Now the other thing I wanted to say that to connect with SQL. Now I will rather I will explain later when I'm <laughs> connecting it. Okay. So let's get into the steps on how to connect Microsoft Access to SQL Server. Okay, this is the database we want to point out to uh, point out to in the connection, right? So to create a new connection, you go to external tab, and you go to new data source, and there are a few options here. You select the from database option, and then under from database there are multiple options as well. You select the SQL Server because this is the one we are going to use. All right, so you select. And then you get a pop-up. It is asking, this is for the ODBC database connection, okay? It has two options. One is it's saying, hey, do you want to import the data from the database or you want to create a link? Now, please make sure that you always select link because we want to create a live link between Access and SQL. So whatever data modification is happening, either from SQL or from Microsoft Access, we want to have a view of it, all right? So that's why we want to create a link, not just import. Import is just one-time activity and that's it, okay? So select the second option, which is link and click OK, and you get this uh, pop-up window. Now in this pop-up, you go to the machine data source. In here, you will see a couple of options here, but we are going to create a new one, okay? So click on new. And uh, it gives you a, some sort of warning. You say, all right, thank you for giving me, giving me warning. Another pop-up appears and you say, next. Now in here, there are three options that have SQL. There are three drivers, data source, 
or drivers, you can say, uh, related to SQL. This is what I was saying. If you have the latest version of SQL, which is 2022, you can use this option, ODBC driver 17 for SQL Server. If you have the older version of SQL, then you use the native client, okay? How do I know this? Because I was having trouble, honestly speaking, in connecting. So I went into Microsoft documentation. I studied a little bit, all right? So maybe I'm wrong, but, you know, hey, I was trying to connect with native client. I was getting error constantly. But then I got into documentation and they mentioned that, you know, with the latest version, native client is not required. So you select this option, ODBC driver, okay? And it works for me. So I'm going to use that, all right? So please check your version of SQL. If it is the latest, then use this option, which I'm going to use. If it is older, then I believe it should be connected with the uh, native client. All right, so I select the ODBC driver and click on next and finish. And I get a new pop-up window. Now in here, it is asking me the name. Now this name, I can type anywhere, anything, sorry. I can type anything, but to keep it simple, I will give the name exactly with the database. It's not mandatory that you give the exact database name, but you know, I'll keep things simple. So I'll give IMS. Here it is asking server. Hey, do, which server do you want to connect? Either you can give IP address or you can give the name of the server, okay? Now, you'll be tempted to click on the dropdown. Please don't do because you most of the time there's nothing in there and it takes a long time for some reason for the dropdown to pop up, okay? So I'm not going to do that. So how do I know which server I'm going to collect to, uh, connect to? Well, I come to SQL. I choose the database which I want to connect to and I right click on the database. I go to the properties and right here you see the server. Okay, yours might be different. Okay, so I click on view connection properties. I get another pop-up and in here server name and I can double click on it, copy it, close it, okay, go back to access and type in the server, okay? Make sure that you use the correct server if you want the data to be, uh, connection to be successful, okay? So I click on next. I keep the first option uh, selected, click on next. Now in here, I need to do a little bit of change. So right now it is uh, being pointing out to default. Well, I need to connect with this database, IMS. So I need to point out to this database in the server. So click here and you click on the dropdown. Now you can see that these are the databases that exist in SQL server, okay? You can see it, DW configuration, Q, IMS. And if you come here in the dropdown, you see those database, configuration, Q, IMS, etc. We are going to connect to IMS. Okay, this is another indication that you are going in the right path. Your connection is successful as of now because it is fetching the information of all the databases in the SQL Server. So click Next and we don't want to do anything here and click Finish. And now it says the data, it gives you summarized view of your ODBC connection and you want to test it, you click on test data source, it says test completed successfully. That means the link as of now is successful. Okay, click OK, click OK. And you can see here IMS is created. Okay, so this is a connection that is created. Now I can click on cancel to close this dialog box or I can click OK to have a view of the tables that resides in the database. These are the tables basically. Okay, so I click OK and I get another pop-up window with lots of tables. All right. Now these are not, these are all system tables. What we are looking at is the tables that start with DBO. These are the tables we want to use, we want to create a link with and the, thankfully these tables are right at the top all the time. Okay. Other tables, these are all, you know, SQL server system related uh, shebang. You don't have to worry about it. What you need to select is the tables that start with TBO. And you click OK. 
and it will do its magic and boom we have the connection with sql how do i know if i hover my mouse on any of the table we can see the connection information here in the intellisense and that's the indication that the connection is successful if i go to the customers table i was actually testing before so you can see one record here let's say and i go here in the customer table and i go to edit 200 records and i can see that information here as well if i change if i add another customer let's say let's check if the data flows properly boop no no customer b at email.com and this customer is active as well now we have created a customer and because this table was open that's why we got that uh, a little bit of error so now let's go back in the table and you can see that customer b is created as well so this is the indication that the database connection is made and the data is uh, linked with sql server okay so that's what i wanted to demonstrate in this video um you know i hope that it was useful and i hope that it will help you to create a successful connection have you made your uh, connection after watching this video if you have successfully connected sql server with microsoft access do let me know in the comments below if you liked whatever you've seen make sure that you smash the like button hit the bell icon subscribe to the channel and join my channel as well thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one